Hello, I'm not Chuck. You may recall that I recently posted a series of three videos about installing a new television antenna on the roof of my travel trailer. I also had to make some repairs due to a small water leak on the roof, and I included quite a few details. But what I didn't include, because I thought it would be so easy, were the wiring connections that were necessary to make the television work properly with the new antenna. Here's a look at the wiring that I'm having to deal with. Now, honestly, it didn't look this bad until I took the television off the wall and pulled all the wiring out of the ceiling. Now, I have to admit, it's not nearly as easy as I thought it would be. I am going to make it work, but I think I should include some instructions on how I accomplish that. This device comes standard with the Razer Z1 antenna. In fact, it comes standard with a lot of different WineGuard RV antennas, and similar devices are shipped with RV antennas from other manufacturers. So it's important that you understand what it is and what it does. First of all, what it isn't is it is not an amplifier. It primarily is a power supply for the amplifier, which is usually located up on top of the RV in the housing that you call the antenna. And it is the antenna, but the amplifier is contained in the same housing. This is the output from whatever television source you're watching, whether it's the antenna or cable TV. This is the F connector where you would need to connect your television. This is the on and off switch for the amplifier. The amplifier is up in the antenna housing, but this is the switch that turns it off and on. When the switch is out, that is up, the amplifier is turned off, and the green LED, which is right there, is not lit. If this device was connected to power, and I push the button down, power would be sent up to the antenna, to the amplifier, and this green LED would be lit. This is an outlet for 12 volt DC power. It is where you can plug in a cigarette lighter plug, and get 12 volt power to go to whatever device you want to power with 12 volts. In some cases, you can get 12 volt televisions that can plug in right there and not have to be connected to AC power. Now I'm going to turn the device around. I'm going to prop it up, and then we're going to talk about the things that are on the printed circuit board on the back of the device. Now I have stood the power supply on its end so that we can get a look at the top of the printed circuit boards and the important parts of that printed circuit board. Notice that at the top left there is an F connector, a coax connector, and just to the right of that connector it's labeled antenna. That's where the coax from the antenna on the roof of your RV should connect. At the top right corner of the printed circuit board is another F connector, and it's labeled SET2. SET2. That's for the second television, if you have one in your RV. Remember that SET1 connects to the F connector poking out of the front. The next F connector, just below and to the left of the SET2 connector, is labeled cable. That's where the coax from the cable TV service provided by your RV park or wherever would connect. So those are the only connections you have to make using coax. However, in order to get the whole device to work, you have to connect power to it. At the very top, there's a gold colored lug. That's where the plus 12 volts DC connects. And just below and to the left, that gold lug, there's a silver one, and that's where the ground for the 12 volts connects. The gray box to the left is the body of the switch, which I showed you on the front panel of the power supply. Well, as you can see, it's turned out to be a really beautiful December afternoon brisk, about uh, maybe 55 degrees and a little wind. This, by the way, is uh, a shot of my cat, Jack. 
He's not to be confused with the famous Jax that belongs to Eric of nomadic fanatic fame. He's my cat, and I like him. I like him just as well as Jax, maybe better. I'm on the way out to the travel trailer because there's something on the outside that I want to show you. There are two coax connections on the outside of the trailer. Here are the two connectors. As you can see, they both have a water-resistant cover. One is labeled satellite ready. Uh, that connector is if I had a satellite dish to set out in the yard or put up on the roof, I could run a piece of coax down to this connector and it would be extended to the inside of the trailer. This one does the same thing except instead of being for a satellite, it's for cable TV. Now let's go inside and take a look there. Here we are back at the rat's nest of wiring that I'm going to have to deal with. I have talked to the tech support department at the company who made my travel trailer. I've also done quite a bit of testing on my own, and between the two sources, I now have a really good idea where every cable should go, and those cables that don't need to go anywhere. Let's start with the cable that is supposed to go to the cable TV connection on the outside of the travel trailer. Well, I've tested it, and it turns out that it may supposed to go there, but it does not. It is absolutely not used for any purpose whatsoever. So I'm going to push it back up in the ceiling and not worry about connecting it. This one, on the other hand, does go to the satellite ready connector on the outside of the travel trailer. I don't have a satellite and don't expect to get one to travel with, but uh, I'm going to hook it back up and label it on the faceplate of this connector so I'll know what it is and where it actually is connected. Now we move on across. This I took off the connector, the F connector on the inside of the power supply. I took it off the F connector that was labeled set two but it doesn't go anywhere either. This end was connected, the other end is not connected. So I don't need to use that anymore either. This, turns out, was labeled correctly. It's labeled right there, antenna. It goes to the antenna on the roof of the uh, travel trailer, and this end connects to the F connector on the printed circuit board labeled antenna. How about that? There's one that's right. Now, here's another one this one also has a piece of green tape on it, and this, in fact, is the one that goes to the connector on the outside of the travel trailer that I told you was for cable TV. I'll be using that. I'll be putting it on the F connector on the printed circuit board that's labeled cable. That only leaves us with these wires. This one, orange, I think it's supposed to be red, but it's really orange, is the plus 12 volts DC. I showed you where that connected, and I'll be putting it back on that same gold-colored lug. This, on the other hand, is the ground. And I've told you in previous videos that in travel trailers and some other places, ground is normally a white wire. So I'll be putting this connector back on the silver-colored lug on the printed circuit board. That takes care of all the connectors. Well, what about this wire? Well, I found out about this one, too. This is a what we call a component cable. It has two connectors and two wires for audio, the red right and the white left. It also has a bigger wire, but a similar connector that's for the video. This is going up inside the ceiling. I actually took out the DVD player that's on the other end of these wires, and I'll be using these wires to plug directly into the mating connectors on the back of the television. This is the backside of the radio and DVD player from my travel trailer. You'll notice that it has connectors similar to the ones that I showed you uh, up close to the television mounting place. One is labeled, one is yellow, that's for video. One is white, that's the left audio, 
and one is red, that is the right audio, notice that the audio connectors are labeled auxiliary in. That's because the audio from the DVD player is actually played through the speakers out of the radio and not the speakers on the television. I'm happy to report that the wiring has now been all sorted out, reconnected, and tested. It looks better than it did before because I've done away with some wires that were no longer needed. However, I have made some changes I want to show you. As you can see right here, I have labeled these two outlets. One, the one on the left, is labeled Satellite Ready External Jack. That refers to the one that's out on the outside of the trailer. The other one has been labeled Set 2. Now, I don't have a second television in the travel trailer, but since the uh, power supply for the antenna has an outlet for one, I decided to go ahead and run a jumper from the back side of the power supply over to the back side of this set two uh, receptacle. I also made an interesting discovery about these three wires. Yes, they do go back to the DVD player, but the problem is that modern televisions no longer have inputs that work with these connectors. So, the idea of using the DVD player to connect to this television, it just won't work. I'll stuff this back up in the overhead, and at some point maybe I'll add a DVD player that uh, has the right outputs for modern televisions. As you can see, the Cowboys are playing football, so um, I'm going to wind this up in a hurry. You can see the television is on the wall. It's connected to the connectors that I wanted to connect it to. I've tucked the RCA cable back up in the ceiling, and we are good to go. Well, I'm glad to have my television working, and I hope maybe you've gotten something out of this video as well. Maybe it'll help you solve a problem in the television wiring in your RV. If so, please subscribe, or ring the bell, or at least leave a comment below. Thanks very much, and don't forget, I'm not Chuck.